heredity and evolution. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to understand what is heredity, what is variation, rules for the inheritance of traits or characters, sex determination in human beings, what is evolution, what are acquired and inherited traits, what is speciation. Evidences for evolution, evolution by stages, and finally about human evolution. Let us discuss about heredity. What is heredity? The transmission of traits or characters from the parents to their offsprings is called heredity. In most simple terms, Heredity means continuity of features from one generation to the next generation. For example, two parents, a male and a female, are involved in sexual reproduction. The sexually reproducing organisms produce sex cells or gametes. The male gamete, called sperm, fuses with a female gamete called Dovomorek, to form a zygote, which gradually develops into a young one, showing some similarities with the parents. The hereditary information is present in the sex cells or gametes of the parents. Hence, gametes constitute the link between one generation and the next and pass on the paternal, that is, father's, and maternal, that is, mother's characters or traits to the offspring. This relation, that continues to exist, between successive generations, is referred to as heredity. Here we should note that, a recognizable feature of a human being, or any other organism like, height, complexion, shape of hair, color of eyes, shape of nose, and chin, etc., are called characters or traits. Let us discuss about variations caused by heredity. What are variations? The differences between the characters or traits among the individuals of the same species are called variations. For example, human height is a trait which shows variation. This is because some people are tall, some are less, some have medium height, some have short height. Whereas, Others are very short. Another example for variation in human beings is ears. The lowest part of our ear is called ear lobe. In most of the people, the ear lobe is hanging, and it is called free ear lobe. In some people, the ear lobe is closely attached to the side of the head, and it is called attached ear lobe. Some amount of variations is produced, even during a sexual reproduction, but it is very small. The number of variations, produced during sexual reproduction is very large. For example, the sugarcane plants reproduce by the process of, a sexual reproduction. So, if we observe a field of sugarcane, we will find very little variations in various sugarcane plants. All the sugarcane plants almost look alike. But in animals including human beings, which reproduce by the process of sexual reproduction, a large number of variations are produced. It is due to these variations, that no two human beings look alike, except, identical twins. From this, we conclude that the number of successful variations is maximized, by the process of sexual reproduction. The variation is a necessity for organic evolution. Now, let us discuss about, accumulation of variations during reproduction. When organisms reproduce, the offspring show minor variations due to inaccuracies in DNA copying. These variations are less in a sexual reproduction, and more in sexual reproduction. Some variations are useful variations, and they help the organism to adjust to the changes in the environment. 
Some variations do not help the organism to adjust to the changes in the environment and they may die and become extinct.